Hey everybody, Josh Sheridan here with the Barely Legal Podcast. Today on the show we have Guido Maniscalco, local politician, political figure, political giant. Uh, we're lucky enough to have him come in today and uh, talk with us about his history and what he's doing here in Tampa and the future of uh, our good city looks like today. How are you doing, Guido? Great. How are you? Good. Thank you for coming in. This is the earliest podcast I've ever done, so you hold that record. Um, how are you doing? Not too bad. I'm enjoying this, uh, I think, last day of the cold weather before we get back into the 80 degree, uh, you know, classic Tampa. I know. Yesterday, I started off with a sweater, and by the end of the day, I was sweating in a t-shirt. Yeah, so it was me, a, me too. So you never know. You get the full so. spectrum. Um, are you from Tampa originally? Yep, born and raised. And did, where'd you go to school? I went to, uh, as a kid, Christ the King. I went oh, really? to uh, That's Saint... where my daughter goes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I was there for a couple of years, then um, transferred to St. John's Greek Orthodox. So okay. people know the Greek festival there on Swan Avenue. Right. Uh, started at Jesuit High School, but then transferred to Tampa Catholic, graduated there, and then did the the rounds. So a year at University of Tampa, a couple of years at HCC, and then finally graduated from USF. So wow, man. I've done, you, the, you... <laughs> I've done it done it all locally. You must be hit up big time for uh, <laughs> contributions from alumni. You've got about 10 different schools there. You got. Sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. Well, that's great, though. You have a breadth of experience. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so right out of college, did you get into politics or, or did no, you have a no. few stops on the way? I, um, I took the LSAT. I oh, really? was applying to go to law school. Uh, my best friend and I at the time, we did everything together. He even went up to uh, Michigan to Thomas Cooley before they opened the campus down here. Um, he found, he said, I got the perfect apartment, the perfect place, the perfect, you know, we had this whole thing planned where we would encourage each other to, um, you know, to get through law school. He's very, he's a, he's a genius. Uh, and I said, what, what better roommate to have that will make sure, like, we have to study. We have to, you know. And um, he... Got married, had kids. Uh, his life took a detour, and uh, he's a teacher now. Oh wow! And I just didn't want to go to law school at the time because I wanted to always get involved in politics. And uh, so, out of college, while doing the LSAT stuff, I was working in the mall at one of the retail stores at International Plaza, and um, I ran for office in 2011, the first time. What store so, were you working at? I was at Mont Blanc, the Penn, the Penn store. place. Okay, yep. All right. so. Yeah, uh, someone had quit. I had applied. The timing was just right. I graduated uh, USF a week after, so that was interesting. And actually, the day I graduated, I had a, I have an English degree. Um, one school called and asked if I'd be interested in teaching English for for a little bit, which oh, wow. I sh which I should have because I think uh, you know I really don't experience. Yeah, I, I don't have many regrets in life. I mean, I'm I'm still young and whatnot, but. Um, you know, I should have taught for a year. Mm -hmm. I think it's extremely rewarding, you know, when you can uh, mold and teach, you know, young students and motivate them and whatnot. And uh, teacher friends that I have, you see the impact that teachers make on the lives, you know, of, of their students, whether it's middle school or high school, it's a big deal. And I think we, we don't appreciate teachers enough. Uh, and so if I could, you know, if I could go back, I'd teach for a year and um you know and, and get that experience both my parents were teachers so i grew up in that household and i saw the you know there's the principled side of it like you're talking about you know the good of it but then there's the dark side of it i got to see a lot of uh uh thursday afternoon happy hours with the teachers and kind of got an inside view into you know <laughs> well i mean i hear stories now and it's you know that that same best friend that wanted to go to law school he's he's a teacher at like a grade f grade d school and he tells me the parent-teacher conferences. You never know oh, what to expect. Part, yeah. and, and, you know, how the administration there encourages him, you know, give him a high five as the students walk into class. Uh, encourage him, you know, tell him they're doing a great job. Uh, you know, things that I wouldn't expect, but he says, you know, they they go to an empty house or, you know, the, the, the it's a single parent home where, the you know, they're working two and three jobs and, and whatnot. And, you know, that time that they spend in school, you know, you want to be a mentor to them. You want to Encourage them as much as you can. And, and well, you I mean, the of it. as far as you wanting to make a change in the type of work that you do, I mean, as far as teachers go, especially in schools like that, what better avenue to, to really impact someone's life, you sure, know, and those sure. kids, you know, there's really could change the path that they're on. So that's awesome. Now, did you have uh, people in politics in your family? 
No, nobody. No. So you're the first one? I'm, you know, I'm a first-generation American. My mom came from Cuba as a little girl at three years old. Oh, wow. uh, went through Miami and then came to Tampa in the early 60s with my grandmother. My grandfather joined them. Uh, he had served in World War II. Uh, my father came from Sicily to Tampa in 1981. His cousins had moved here a few years prior, so he came to be with them and met my mom, and the rest is history. Um, but nobody... You know, my grandfather was in the jewelry business. My mm -hmm. family's been in, is in the jewelry business. Um, you know, my dad's two sisters. One is an OBGYN in Sicily. His other um, sister is a is a teacher, but teaches. I don't know if she teaches like uh, law courses. You know, she's she's different schools and different things. Right. But um, and my father became a jeweler. Um, he had studying account studied accounting. Wow, that's kind of a big accounting. jump. Accounting. Uh, accounting and uh, got into jewelry, so that's that's what he does now. Um, but no, I don't think anybody's had ever political ambitions. We weren't politically involved um, because of my, you know, my grandfather. Years ago, they knew a lot of people. A lot of people have since passed away. But um, I will tell you that as a teenager, you know, I was always with my grandmother, and uh, sometimes the phone would ring, and... Uh, Is this the this, Cuban grandmother or the Italian grandmother? Cuban grandmother. Okay. And uh, the phone would ring, and I'd answer, and it would be a, uh, a lady on the other end named Evelyn Greco. Oh, okay. And <laughs> she would call for my grandmother. She had known her from when she worked in the bank. My grandmother would see her years ago, back right. in the 70s, I think, and uh, she's the mother of Mayor Dick Greco. Yeah. So there was always that. There were people like um, Judge E.J. Salcinas, who was uh, a commonly seen figure, you know, throughout my life. Um, who else? Sandy Friedman, uh -huh. you know, here and there, my grandmother would support her campaigns back in the in the 90s, late 80s and whatnot. Governor Bob Martinez was someone that my family knew back in the 80s wow. and 90s. Uh, so they were they were there, and how my father raised me was, you know, you always show respect, and it would be you know, they were very good friends with this judge, mm -hmm. uh, Vince Giglio, was his name, who passed away about ten years ago, so a little over ten years, and he married my parents in this legal thing, you know, in the backyard of my grandfather's house. Uh, we traveled to Italy together, you know, always good friends, but my father always made sure to never not address him as judge, whether yeah. he was retired or not, it was judge. Um, we were friends with a, uh, a two-star general named Frank Regano, uh, who's 90 years old now. And it was always the general. Related to the attorneys? No, 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 okay. no, no. But, um, you know, it was always the general, make sure the general. And I remember I finally met Dick Greco, uh, in Ybor City in Centennial Park when I was maybe 12 or 13 years old. And I had never really met, you know, I was a kid. I never met anybody famous and, you know, important right. other than, oh, this is so-and-so, so, you know, the family friend or your father's friend or your grandfather's friend. And it was, you want to meet the mayor, the mayor. And I remember Greco was in a black overcoat. Mm -hmm. And I met this guy because, I'm you know, I'm 13 years old, 12 years old. He's a trip, old. too. I just met him recently for the first time. <laughs> but, you know, the mayor, the mayor, such a big deal. And, you know, this, like, first person of, of, of you know, a famous person. You know, he's, he's, he's the mayor of the town. And um, I met him, and I, I would hear about his charisma, this natural charisma that, the, that he had. And I asked my mother, again, a 13-year-old kid, I go, what's, what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. And she says, when he talks to you, he makes you feel like you're the only person in the room. And he invades your, he, he gets in your personal space, and, you know, he makes you feel like that. You're the most, you're, like, you're his best friend. And that's how you leave a conversation when you first meet him, like, you know, we're, I'm his new best friend. It's 100% you know, true. The yeah. way he talks to you, the he way he... grabs your arm and he makes you feel his muscle and he you, tells you jokes. But and, you yeah. could tell him, you know, I had a turkey sandwich for lunch. And to him, it would be, you know, that's the greatest thing I've heard all day. Yeah. You know, like it was so important. So, and she would tell me as a little girl, my mom went to Villa Madonna over on Columbus. And um, I don't know if he visited the school back in the late 60s when he was first mayor. But it was, uh, you know you know, good looking, young mayor, young family, beautiful wife, all this stuff, you know, it was like this, this glamorous couple. And uh, anyways, I've gotten to know him over the years. Uh, and I've, and I've understood, you know, what people say that natural charisma, mm -hmm. because you talk to him and, and you're, you're the most important thing there that there's, there, there could be a 1000 people in the place, but he talks to you and he's, he's razor focused. So people like him, uh, people like uh, Mayor Nick Nucio, whom I never met, he died when I was a kid, but you know, he was the first Latin mayor, you know, he's old school, he cared about the people, he was always in the community. 
people like that influence me. Um, and I said, I want to be like that, you know, and I, and, and growing up, remember I, you know, I'm 35. So I got the, uh, I got to see, you know, the, the, the important guys in the community was, were those world war two folks. So it would be, you know, you got to go talk to Charlie Miranda. He's not of the world war two generation, but he had been there for so many years uh, and he's still there. Now I serve with him, uh, in city council, um, people like Tony Garcia, senior, uh, Marcelo Maceda. Um, you know, Judge EJ, EJ Salcinas, people like Mayor Dick Greco, all the people that he had around him, people like Fernando Noriega, who was always good friends with my grandmother, Monsignor Higgins at St. Lawrence. Sure, yeah. Uh, and going to Jesuit is another thing. I started, I, when I was there, I was there in the late 90s, and all the original priests were there from when the school started. Father Canelli, uh, Father Hartnett, they've all passed away, but I was given the good fortune of, you know, being alive and, and trying to under, you know, and, 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 building those friendships with these important figures that many of whom have passed away, right. but were so significant and so important to this community. So all those things influenced me. And I said, you know, they may not be rich, they may not be millionaires, but it's not about money. It's about, you know, the respect that they have in the community and their sincere passion, you know, for Tampa. So all those things over the years uh, influenced me to want to be involved. You do you know? have siblings at all? I have a younger sister. How much younger? Two years younger. Okay. What's she do? She started off, uh, graduated high school, went to work for Mac Cosmetics, okay. a makeup artist. For she was there for ten years, and now she freelances, so she'll do weddings and, and events. Okay. And um, she's married out in Valrico okay. to um, uh, my brother-in-law, who is uh, a wonderful person. Uh, I can't say anything. There's nothing negative to say. My sister's extremely happy. They have a great life together, and two little girls. So I have two nieces. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, but he's the complete opposite. You know, I mean, you go to the house and it's NASCAR and country music, yeah. and he drives a pickup truck. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. My sister's happy, and he's a great person. But you figure, like, we're so, you know, traditional Italian, traditional Cuban, Spanish. You know, like, yesterday was Three Kings Day. Yeah. You know, it's important to us. Right. Uh, it's important to have Noche Buena when you have, you know, the pork and the, the black beans and rice and the yuca and all that stuff. Um well, when you get to Brandon and Plant City and Valrico, those areas, it's kind of a cross section of those two things. My wife swears that she's related to you somehow. Her maiden name is Basiglio. No, I, I know the whole family. Do you? I know the whole family. Try, you know, I know uh, cousins. I know, you know it's not a common name, but sure. you, you know, I know. Um, I went to high school with Melissa. I guess it yeah. would be her first yeah. cousin because I know there's several yeah, and brothers uh, and stuff. Melissa is uh, she's a pharmacist now, and her dad is Norman Senior, who's a veterinarian out there but yep. out there in that area brandon plant city valrico you have kind of the the southern mixed with the italian you know so you get a lot of that kind of cross section out that way you think oh it's all tampa no it's you know where do you live town and country where do you live brandon where do you live west wesley chapel you know it, the area has grown so people have spread out but you meet folks from all over and oh my grandmother was born in ebor city you know yeah. or, it's like, or they, they worked in the cigar factory and you're like what are you doing out here he goes eh. It is what it is. Uh, a family friend of ours, Joe Caltagirone, is going to be 94 next month. He said, uh, you know, after World War II, you know, we come back to the old neighborhoods. He, he lived in Seminole Heights. Um, he says he was the first Italian family to live in Seminole Heights. So he was born in 26. His bro brother was born, I think, in 23. So at the time, you know, Seminole Heights was young. Now it's, you know, a historic neighborhood. Right. Um, but he says, you know, after World War II, we left. You know, he goes, I got married. I got an apartment on Davis Islands. You know, he lives out, he's lived out in Lutz for, for years now. And he goes, but we come back to the old neighborhoods. This is, you know, before this renaissance that we're experiencing. Uh, you know, you come back in the 80s and the 90s and you go to Ybor City and the Heights and, and, and whatnot. And you go, what happened? You know, I mean, everything's so different. Not because the interstate came through and whatnot. He goes, but, you know, we left after the war and, and, and in the 1950s and, and how so much changed. We moved out to, oh, we want to, you know, we get... A bigger house and, and more land out in, in, in Brandon and Lutz and whatever. So people spread out. Now they come back to the neighborhood. And now there's there's a new generation of folks that, that have invested for the last several decades in these neighborhoods. And they've come back in such a way that, I mean, like we're in Tampa Heights now. Um, it's incredible what's going on in this neighborhood. It's incredible what's going on in West Tampa and Seminole Heights. Uh, Sulphur Springs is... is is there historically significant, but I think it's lying dormant. It's like it's another an untouched historic area. But, um, you know, this new generation of people, maybe it's millennials, 
you know, we sometimes get a bad rap, but when I speak to millennials and generations younger, I tell them we're the generation that's going to save the world. And what does that mean? We discuss things like climate change. We discuss things like, you know, trying to pull people out of poverty, talking about a living wage, you know, helping the homeless and the houseless, reinvesting in these older neighborhoods as they have. You know, look at that historic bungalow. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, it was an old house. Right. You know, but there are people that, that have been, you know, in the front lines 30 years ago living in these neighborhoods um, that live there now and whatnot. But, you know, our generation is... Uh, you know, invest in the past, preserve the history, you know, keep telling that story, moving it forward for the next generation. So I give our generation a lot of credit. You know, when we get put down, it's, you know, we've, we're appreciating things like our grandparents appreciated. You know, we may not be that war, World War II, Depression generation, but I graduated USF in 07, in December of 07. And I remember several friends of mine whom all left, that came down here because it's a Tampa doesn't have what we need. Uh, but you'd, you'd apply for a job and you'd say, I have this degree. I have these student loans. I've been studying. I've been, you know, I have my master's, whatnot. And you would hear, there, there's no jobs. You know, the economy was starting to go into that downturn. And uh, it would be, you know, go work in a restaurant and wait tables, go work in the mall. I mean, like I did, right. making $9 an hour, which I'm grateful for. I mean, there's... Uh, it sharpens you know, your blade. I mean, it teaches you... I like, I, I enjoy, I like to work. I like to stay busy. I'm up at 5, 5.30 every day. Um, I go to bed at a fairly reasonable hour. I love the morning. I like to be productive. I like to get things going. But, uh, you know, my grandparents' generation experienced the Depression. My generation experienced the Great Recession. Right. And uh, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not, you know, for whatever ha happened with the housing market and, and, you know, the global economy in general. But, you know, we, we've learned to... We've, we've understood struggle to a certain degree. We've worked hard. Um, you know, we understand sacrifice, you know, I mean, as, as my generation, young people. And we know, you know, we don't get it handed to us. It's, it's not easy because, you know, we graduated and it was, there's no jobs. You know, there's no money. The banks aren't lending. You want to buy a house? You might have good credit, but uh, put so much money down. You right. know, prove yeah. to us that you don't need the money and we'll, and we'll, well lend, lend it, it to you. you. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you come out of college, I didn't have money. You yeah. know, so we go to work and whatnot. But, um, you know, I'm the youngest uh, member of the city council. Let's talk about that. So you were working at an international mall. So how did you even know to run? How did you even know how to run? I mean, like, tell I me did, about that process. I, you know, I, I was on Facebook. Okay. And at the time, you had to be a college student. You know, this is 05 when I got on Facebook. And I think by 07, 08, I said, you know, I want to run for office. You know, everyone dreams, you know, oh, what if I could be president of the United States? Whatever. But uh, I wanted to start small, and I like being, you know, in the municipal government, you know, in, in that arena, because, you know, the president can do whatever, the governor can sign whatever, your con member of Congress, your congressman, your congressman or woman, can do whatever. But if your trash doesn't get picked up, your recycling is messed, you have potholes, you have flooding in your street, those are things that affect you locally, and something that the city or the county, you know, again locally, would uh, would help you with you know so uh whatever can happen on the larger scale but what happens locally you know can affect you the most well funny funny so funny story about that is uh 2016 i was in well, i'm still in therapy but 2016 i was in therapy and i was pretty uh focused on the election i was listening to hours and hours of podcasts i was watching every news channel i could and i was talking to my therapist and she's she was like how much do you really think this election is going to affect you on a personal level and it was a hard question to answer because at the time it seemed like an existential crisis to me. But the point she was making was very true. You know, like you need to be able to get to work. You need to get your trash picked up. You need to have, you know, all these. These are things that are much more likely to impact your day to day than whatever's happening on the national level. So you're 100 percent right. And uh, you hey. know, that's something I have to remind myself of every day when I'm getting too caught up in, in national affairs. I look at, you know, how the uh, the office of the president and whose president affects us. So I always look at history um, and try to study history. For example, had John F. Kennedy not been assassinated, would American involvement in Vietnam had escalated as it did? Um, you know, we had Lyndon Johnson come in and, you know, history will show you that. Would there have ever been a presidency of Nixon, you know, had Kennedy survived? Um, had, um, had Al Gore won the 2000 election, would Barack Obama as president of the United States 
even have existed because I think whomever won that election, 9-11 was going to happen, the economy was going to hurt, and by the time the 08 elections would have you know, come around, the other party would it would have been, you know, oh, the Democrats have ruined everything. you got to get a Republican in there, and we could have had a President McCain or a President Romney or whatever, um, and, and you wouldn't have had that historical significance of having Barack Obama. Sure. Um, and in that, you know, would you have had a Hillary Clinton? Would you have had, you know, would we have a Trump now? So... It's interesting to see, you know, the death of a president in 1963, how the elections went, because I think Florida was the deciding factor with the Electoral College, uh, or the however it was, I don't remember, in 2000, um, how things would be different historically, and, and how we look at everything happens for a reason, and everything is, it goes back to fate, and it's, you know, our destiny is already written, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you don't know. So, anyways, that's, that's getting beyond, you know, on the national level, but at the local level, um, all these things that I've mentioned, you know, will affect you. Um, whoever gets elected mayor, because there's, the mayor has so much authority. We have a strong mayor form of government. But at the same time, we have seven city council members that can um, override a veto, should the mayor veto something, uh, with five out of the seven votes, which we call a supermajority. Uh, we haven't had to use that. But for example, people will say, you know, what is city council? I remember one gentleman told me back in 2010, you're just a glorified zoning board. And I said, you could look at it like that, or you could look at it as we approve the, the budget that the mayor proposes. You know, if there's a, a budget that, that we don't agree with, I mean, we can fight that. It's not just, I'm going to vote against it. If enough of your colleagues uh, choose to vote against that budget, you know, now you're putting, you know, the city in, in, a, in, a, in a different set of circumstances. Um, we had a uh, contentious budget a couple years ago because it was to raise the millage rate for the first time since the 1980s. And uh, the reason was so many factors. One of them was there was an, an additional homestead exemption that was on the ballot that people assumed uh, would pass and it did not pass. Uh, that would have been a, a multi-million dollar hit to the city's coffers to our budget. Um, thankfully, it did not pass. Um, but in that, uh, the offer transportation sales tax passed with an overwhelming majority. The school sales tax passed um, you know, with an overwhelming majority. So it was a, a perfect storm of, of, you know, it was to our benefit that homestead exemption would have been very detrimental to us. But then again, it would have affected us as council to make budget decisions, the mayor as well, what to cut, what not to include, what uh, projects to, uh, to delay, you know, whether it's an investment in a park, um, fixing docks in a park, um, you know, restoring a park, fixing our roads, whatever it is. So, you know, all that has a major effect. Um, but I, I was first elected in um, 2011. So I, 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 I don't want to skip too, over that part yeah. because that's that's interesting to me. You were saying you were on Facebook. You had just started on yeah. Facebook. Was it a, were you, did you race against somebody? Did you? So I was on Facebook and I figured, you know, I could have a great social media platform and, you know, get young people out to vote. Then it was opened up to everybody, you know, like parents and grandparents. Everybody's on Facebook now. Um, I could build enough of a social media presence that I may not have to raise all the money to do direct mail. I'm going to go the, the way of the future, the digital way, the way of the social media, the way of smartphones and apps and whatnot. So I had one opponent. And I was 25. Nobody knew me. I was showing up. I would freeze. An amazing when I would name, speak. though. You got an amazing name. Well, I mean, <laughs> even one gentleman who will remain unnamed, he goes, "You might want to stop using the name Guido and start showing your face, because that's a tough name." Yeah. And I looked at him and I said, "Barack Hussein Obama, yeah, President of the United <laughs> States." Now tell me that my, you know, and that he never said anything again. I go, "It doesn't matter. I mean, we're we're a paella. We're a melting pot. Every, you know." People from all different walks of life come to the United States, and you can, it doesn't matter who you are. You know, if, if you have the right message and, and you get enough votes, of course, you know, you win. So um, I was in a race with another individual who I was not going to beat. You know, the odds were always against me, and uh, that person dropped out of the race. Really? And for a week, it was an odd feeling of, wow, I can really pull this off as a 25 year old nobody. And, and then, like, four other people got in the race. And um, so, the that first campaign in 2011 i came in fifth place out of fifth place and i raised thirteen thousand dollars or so when i was supposed to raise a hundred and fifty thousand dollars and that was it so instead of feeling discouraged because i remember the night that I, that I lost people kept asking me are you okay are you okay and i was fine i said i'm gonna learn 
from my mistakes. I'm going to learn from all the advice that I that I received in this campaign, and I'm going to get as as involved as I can in in causes that I care about. So I got involved with the Ebor City Lions. Uh, I became president of my neighborhood association. Um, I was appointed by this the previous city council to the city of Tampa Code Enforcement Board, and now it's you know not just resume building, but doing things that I care about and gaining experience and meeting people from that. So in 2014, I filed, which um, Facebook memories came up, and it said that six years ago today, I filed to run for city mm-hmm. council for the district that I'm in. And um, How do you was, choose your district? Huh? How do you choose the district that you run you for? You have to live in the district, you, unless okay. you go for a citywide seat. Then you can live anywhere in the city of Tampa. Okay. So my district goes from Bush Boulevard and the interstate, Sulphur Springs, all the way down to Plant High School. Oh, wow. So it's Seminole Heights, parts of Tampa Heights, West Tampa, uh, West Shore, the airport, Raymond James, the the malls, International Plaza, West Shore Plaza, what a great Beach district. Park, Colbert Isles, parts of Sunset Park. So you go from one end of the spectrum to the sure, other, yeah. new to old, historic, you know, huge. It's wonderful. I mean, what a variety that I have the honor of representing. But um, I ran in that race in in fourteen to fifteen, so it was an, a a one year plus campaign. I really wasn't raising much money, you know. I had uh, an opponent that was raising money like like crazy. Mm-hmm. I think ended up raising over 200 and something thousand oh or spent over I you know, it was a lot of money and I think I had a total of 56,000 bucks. So I went into a runoff with 28 or 29% to my opponent's 46 or 47%. Again, the odds against me, and it was a grueling, like, three, four-week sprint to the runoff, and it was a very nasty campaign, and um, the night of the election, you know, I'm not going to get into, like, the the whole story, but I ended up winning by 151 votes. Oh, my God. So, Dick Greco actually told me in the living room of David Straz, who had just run for mayor last year, um, back in 2011, 2010, he looked at me. Uh, there was a, an event for for Greco for mayor at at the gentleman's house, and he goes, "You're gonna know this when you win. When when you win, everybody shows up to your party." Yeah. And let me tell you what I had the uh, the election night watch party in a historic cigar factory at Armenian Columbus, and uh, everybody showed up to that party. Dick Greco walked in, David Straz walked in, Bob Enriquez was there supporting me. You know, always uh, all these other politicians, other council members. It, it was great. And in classic Tampa fashion, what do you do when, you know, when you want to go celebrate? Uh, everyone went to the Village Inn Pancake House yeah. on Dale Mabry yeah. and Kennedy. Yeah. So I had pancakes and I went home. And uh, I remember a friend of mine at my election night party goes, your life is different now. And, um, you know, and it, it, it is. And at the same time, it's really not. My friends are the same. Uh, I eat at the same places. I don't feel any more or less important. You know, I've. You getting a lot of calls for help. You get a lot. I know, you know I've pushed that button before. <laughs> no, but but it's but it's okay. That's what we're here for, and I right. enjoy and I try to help. I can't do everything. Sure. You know, people think, oh, you're on the count. You can, you know, make it Wave so. Your you hand, know, yeah. what is it, Star Trek style? Make it so. Yeah. No, the mayor has a lot of authority, but um, but I love what I do. So I ran for re-election uh, last year. We had an election. Is it a two-year term or four-year four year term? Okay. So I didn't. I was in the the race for almost a year. I had no opponent until the last 45 minutes before qualifying and somebody jumped in. So, and I still, and I, and I won, uh-huh. you know, again, with the help of a lot of people. Sure. I, I have a list of people to thank that I think about every day and, uh, and I appreciate them so much. I mean, I could read off a list, but, but I make sure to tell them, you know, thank you for allowing me this opportunity. Because again, the odds were against me. I wasn't raising money. You know, I was asked the Sunday before the election in 2015, before I pulled off that, that narrow win, what do you do if you, know, if you lose? And people were already preparing for it. What, what are you going to do? And I said, I hope to mentor and encourage other people, young people, to get in, involved in politics. So I got elected at 30 years old, um, the youngest since, I want to say, 1971. Mm-hmm. I'm not the youngest ever, but you know, Mayor Greco, you know, he got sworn in at 30 years old as a council member, then sworn in as mayor at 34. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, on, I'm, I'm, I'm on par with the, at least the same age as the gentleman that first inspired me. Sure. And, and that means a lot. That I can take it back to the beginning of the story of, you know, so how'd you get involved? And here I am. So I have um, 
just under three and a half years left in this term. I'm term limited. I don't know what I want to do. I mean, I can step away from politics and go back into the private work and whatever, you know, life is short. And uh, I just, you know, I want to be happy. And, and, and it's, it's an honor every day to serve the people of the city. What's your day to day look like? I mean, are you in an office? Are you driving around town meeting I'm with different here, people? I'm here uh, now. Um, I go to a board meeting, which could be three hours after this. Um, I'll have lunch briefly, you know, something microwavable from the mm. freezer. And uh, at three o'clock, I have another event uh, at Rocky Point. My district goes all the way out there to the causeway. And then I have a board meeting at seven o'clock tonight. Um, every day is different, but sure. it's usually go, go, go. And I love it. You know, I had uh, really nothing to do this last weekend and I didn't know what to do with myself. You know, yeah, I like, find that too, the idle hands, you know. You um, know so. I remember I ran into you at uh, the bookstore over there, uh, the Barnes & Noble on Dale Mabry, and you were in dress clothes, and it was relatively late, because I remember the store was almost closing, and you were coming from one event and still had one more event to go to around 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night, and I was like, God, I don't have... It. Was that a Friday night? It would have probably been yeah. if my wife Yeah, I was coming out. from Ebor after two events, going to West Shore for another event, yeah. and... Um, yeah, I just popped into Barnes and Noble just to see uh, the magazine rack. Yeah, that's it. You know, in and out. You know, I, I like going to bookstores. I mean, I know, you know, Barnes and Noble is a is a big chain, and and I always I try to buy books from from independent. I wish there was more of them. You know, uh, the they, vinyl's got a resurgence. There's a b bunch of those popping up, but as far as bookstores, the only one I can think of is the one down there on uh, what is that Tampa Street, isn't it? No, it's gone. It's gone. The old. Tampa book right company. across from the French place it's gone oh is it I didn't know that was gone and that was that was I, I would find books that I couldn't get on Amazon or sure. eBay or they were cheaper than than everybody else. and How I'd rather support gone? last year maybe oh man but they had a great I mean you go in there and I found stuff that I didn't even know existed so my wife's a big uh, ballet fan and I tell everybody she's got the biggest collection of ballet books probably than any yeah any theater, any bookstore, any library, because, you know, you go anywhere, you can find two or three of them. She's got hundreds of them, and she picked up so many rarities just walking in there. You my, know. my mother loves ballet. Um, uh, I believe she she has pictures with, or she I know she met Barishnikov. He came to Tampa for something. He had a signing somewhere, and um, I believe she saw uh, Rudolf Nureyev, yeah. you know, big, big person in the 60s and 70s. Um, he of course, uh, passed away, but I go, you, you, you've seen legends, you know, you think ballet, what is a, you know, that's not a, a, a guy thing. That's not, you know, I'll tell you what, man, it's, but it's beautiful. Sure. It's beautiful. I, I walked into a place the other day and I, and I met a friend and there was, there was, there was hardly anybody in this place. And there was this beautiful classical music playing mm -hmm. and you just feel energized, you know, just, I love music. Music is a big part of my life. And, um, you know, sitting, let's say you go to the Strads and, and, and watch a performance, watch it live. There's nothing more beautiful. I remember um, going to see The Sound of Music, uh -huh. you know, not ballet, something completely different. And leaving there in tears because it was such a wonderful production. One thing is seeing the movie, another thing is seeing it live. So if you see a live ballet performance or watch the, um, the Florida Orchestra, um, it's, it's a wonderful moving experience. I mean, if you want a peaceful night where you want to feel re-energized and... and and whatnot, leave their feeling good, you know, feeling all the emotions, happy, sad, whatever. Classical music, ballet, you know, a live orchestra, whatever it is. So. Well, the other part of it, too, I, I was from about 2008 to 2012, I was uh, doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I don't know if you've ever watched one of those classes, but the first 30 minutes that you're doing all these exercises on the floor to warm yourself up, you're, you're running around the studio, you do, you kind of push yourself across the floor, you do somersaults, all this stuff. And it's, it's physically very taxing. Well, at that same time, my wife was doing a lot of ballet classes. And a couple times I had the opportunity to go watch her classes. And I was watching the warm-up that they did before ballet. And it was almost the exact same thing. And I was like, you know, I think a lot of these tough guys from this class, if they came over to this ballet class sure. tried to do what they're doing, they would, you know, they would pass out halfway through. So it's, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a sport as much as it's an art, in, in my no. view. I mean, I mean yeah. from a physical perspective it's art art yeah. you know ballet is art music is art poetry is art good conversation is art you know i have an Eng english degree so what you know you read a lot you write a lot i read a lot of poetry i read a lot of books and um there's a beauty in in in, in language there's a beauty and you know it's all around us and we have to see it and embrace it not just you know oh, art is painting right you know or photography art is 
is everywhere. Right. So um, you just have to you know appreciate all that life has to offer because it, it's all around us. Now you said uh, you traveled back to Italy. Uh, you've gone back there several times. Once I went twice last year. My grandmother still lives there in a little town in Sicily, about uh, twenty five hundred people or so. So imagine what's the town called? Alessandria della Rocca. Okay. So. Um, my father made sure to raise my sister and I speaking Italian, so I'm fluent in Italian. Are you really? I'm fluent in Spanish. I study French on a daily basis, which, you know, if I if I flew to France, I could get around sure. to a certain degree. Um, German, not so much. I, I flew through Frankfurt, and I had a layover there when I went to Italy last year, and I was completely lost. I didn't even want to leave my hotel. I'm sure. like, if I get stuck, you know, but enough people spoke English. But um, my grandmother lives in that town. My dad's two sisters live in Sicily. I have cousins in northern Italy in Bologna. Uh, I believe I still... I had a great uncle in Florence who passed away, my grandfather's brother. Florence is my favorite. I love Florence. It's, it's, I haven't been in so many years. I mean, generally, I fly through Milan. Uh -huh. I'll spend time there and then fly into Palermo, Sicily, and then it's a two-and-a-half-hour car ride or bus ride to my grandmother's front door. Um, I have family in Switzerland. I have family in London. I have family. I have my cousin in uh, in Venice. I talked to him yesterday. We meet uh, our grandfathers on my mother's side. The one that he went from Sicily to Cuba after World War II. Oh wow! So we we meet. Uh, we've met a couple of times. You know, if I'm in Milan, he'll fly up. We'll have dinner. Um, it's just you know, but but I embrace the culture. I embrace my roots. I embrace what my family taught me. But again, you know. Uh, French is a language I've studied for several years. Have you been to France? I've been to Paris. Okay. But I haven't explored. I've always wanted to go to the south of France, uh, see the French Riviera. Um, you know, just just explore small town. Now that I can speak a little more, I mean, I can, sure, I can yeah. read Open a lot. Sure, yeah. doors can, for you. Yeah, it's, you know, and a lot of people speak English over there. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, oh, the French look down on Americans. No, if you make an attempt to speak, I'm, I if you was, show respect, they'll respect you. I was treated completely different. You yeah. know, I would even ask them, you know, do you speak English because my French is, you know, not so great. And they were very accommodating. I found that And of that course, too. what did I do in Paris? You know, the first time I went, I had this layover in connecting to uh, Italy, and I went to a uh, Père Lachaise cemetery. I'm into cemeteries and history and old buildings. And who's there? Jim Morrison. Oh, wow. And yeah. uh, I said, I have to pay my respects to uh, someone's music that I've loved since I was a teenager. And in that same cemetery is... Uh, Oscar Wilde. Oh wow. And who's who's uh, who's uh, crypt or mausoleum, it's a weird sculpture, was covered in lipstick. Oh really? Now they have a, a plastic barrier. Then there's Edith Piaf, you know, very mm -hmm. famous uh, uh, wow. female French Stacked. singer. So I'm like, you know. Yeah. But like, like my friend says, why do you go to the cemetery? They're not there. You know, yeah. their soul is not there. But you're you know, you're whatever. And and uh, it's a touchstone you, to think it's, about them, it's yeah. It's something. And, and and what's interesting with Jim Morrison is I believe that cemetery is the number four most visited spot in Paris. And he has like 24-hour security. There's a fence around his uh, his tomb because people have... They, there was a bust on his grave of him, of, of Morrison, and it was stolen. And people, you know, ride all over the, the, the grave marker and whatnot. But, um, you know, it was nice. I mean, Paris... He had a history is, here locally. He went through St. Pete. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Jack Kerouac. Jack had, Kerouac. Had a house there, which is still there. Yeah. Um, and then you hear a lot of like Tampa local stories, you know, the Yankees, um, you know, baseball players through the years, uh, Babe Ruth hitting his longest home run at the University of Tampa. Um, John Prine lives over in Coldport. <laughs> that was just, yeah, that struck it, me as it, another, yeah. I think the lead singer of ACDC lives uh, in Sarasota. Yeah. Uh, what is it, Brian Johnson? Yeah. I, I want to say Bon Scott, but no, you know, yeah, he's the Brian original Johnson, from yeah. years ago. Um, a lot of celebrities come through Tampa that you don't expect. I was at the Oxford Exchange one day and I kept hearing, uh, there's a big, there's a big movie star in here. There's a big movie, star. and I'm looking for Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, Sandra Bullock, somebody. And I'm sitting at the the great center table. That yeah, the they long have this, table. The long table, and I notice this woman, very, very fair skin, with a big hat, and two guys with her. And I'm there having coffee, playing on my phone like I usually do. And she walks out and she leaves. And I go, so who's the famous movie star? She goes, you were in front of her the whole time, and it was Tilda Swinton. Oh my gosh. Who. I go, who is Tilda Swinton? And I look and I go, ah, curious case of uh, Benjamin Button. Benjamin Button. And you know, there she is. And, you know, she's there's a scene where they're in, in Russia, I think, together. And they you know, they keep meeting in the middle of the night in this hotel. And I go, here she is, the, the woman that taught Benjamin Button how to 
how to eat caviar and drink vodka and you know that's that's how yeah. the scene was and i liked i love that movie so i'm going oh okay and then she was like the 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 queen or the the she's something in narnia or i i don't know i'm clueless too she was in i know she's in doctor strange and all these other okay movies. yeah, there you go, yeah. So, so yeah um as far as Tampa goes, that I want to talk with you a little bit about kind of what you see as big issues locally, things that you're facing now, uh, the future growth, that sort of thing. I mean, is there any hot hot button items that you're dealing with on a daily basis? We've, um, you know, you look at ten years ago to now, in the in the midst of the Great Recession, layoffs, budget cuts, you know, the the, the whole global economy, the housing market, everything. And if you would have told me, look where we will be in less than 10 years, uh, I wouldn't have believed it. I mean, I was walking the Riverwalk the other day, and there's Armature Works, and there's Eulalie and Water Works, and everything happening downtown, and the Vinick Project, and the... Have you met him? Vinick? Yeah. I've shaken his hand. Yeah, okay. Um, he speaks at an event I'm going to be at this weekend, you know, but I've been close to him, but I've never really had conversations... What's a, how, how did he get in here? I mean, he's not from the, here. No, originally. I think he's from the Boston area. Yeah. Um, he wanted a hockey team. He bought the Lightning. Um, and then in that, you know, he's Just down here with all the development down in that area. All the is, potential. It's crazy. So in, the, in these last 10 years, we've had over 55,000 new people come to Tampa. You know, someone asked you the day, he goes, oh, when you go to the grocery store, when you go to the, you know, the armature works, when you go to the mall, do you get stopped all the time? And I go, I don't recognize anybody. Yeah. There's so many new people. And you meet them and they'll say, oh, I've been here six months. I live in the apartments across the street. Oh, I got here in 2016. Oh, I got married and relocated here. Blah, 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 blah. But you don't really meet a lot of those Tampa natives. Now, yeah. if you go into West Tampa, into the, you know, the old, older neighborhoods and whatnot, you go to the coffee shops, you know, they're all, they're all there. But um, we've had this, you know, I graduated USF at the end of 07 and all my friends that moved down here left. They all went back home except that one best friend who lives in Vero Beach. Uh, so at least he's within reasonable distance. But they said, Tampa doesn't have what I need. Beyond jobs, it just, you know, it wasn't happening at the time. And um, now some of them have said, I got to come back to Tampa to see what's going on. Or my favorite was uh, my friend who visited after being gone for years said, I'm sorry that I left. I want to take my kids to this park and walk my dog here. And But I like that. I'm sorry that I left. I said, you had to stick it out. I stuck it out. You know, I, I say I'm born, raised, and educated here. I never left to go to I didn't go to Michigan to go to law school. I've always been here through the good and the bad. So things are good now. But me, who waits for the other shoe to drop, who I was told the other day, you're scared to be happy. And I go, no, I overthink everything in preparation for whatever's scared coming Scared to be happy, me. that's a... I, you know, I'm happy, and then, <laughs> yeah. I, and then I'm, I'm awake at night, and I'm going, what can I overthink tonight? Sure, yeah. But, you know, things are good now. I don't know if there's another recession coming. I don't know if the housing market's going to... I hear these things. Give it another two years. Give it another year. Give it another six months. You know, oh, now we could be going to war with another country. Whatever. Which that drives the price of oil up, the price of gold up. Things that aren't going to affect us, but people will hold on to their money. If, sure. there's, if there's, you know, a market crash or, or a drop or uh, the government's shut down, people are more careful with how they spend. So Tampa had several issues. Um, you know, all for transportation was that sales tax referendum that passed that is now, you know, up in the air because of litigation. Um, I, I openly endorsed that and supported that. Why? Because it's an investment in this community of bringing, uh, uh, you know, rail alternative methods of transportation here, expanding our streetcar system, uh, paving our roads, fixing our roads, building our sidewalks, things that we need. It's not, you know, we're building a baseball stadium, which that's not something that I, I think you know, tax dollars should go to. I think, you know, if you're going to, you know, tax the public or raise the taxes, whatever, it should go to investments. Um, the school sales tax uh, pass, and that's 10 years, that's half a percent, but that goes to schools that, you know, they need new air conditioning, they don't have air conditioning, whatever it is, you know, crumbling infrastructure, I, I put it all in that. Um, we have people moving here, people investing here, the real estate market is hot. Uh, we've always get put on a list of, you know, we're either like a pet, you know, the number four pet friendly city or a great place to retire, a great place to start a family or start a business. We have a lot going for us, but we have a lot of people that are houseless, homeless, that are out on the streets. That's always a problem. You know, God, why is I, it that... driving down Tampa Street going, <laughs> well, going home every day. 
you know, I mean, on the national level, you know, why is it that we don't have, you know, health care for everyone? Why are people filing medical bankruptcy? Why are people still homeless? You know, when we're the greatest country in the world, why aren't veterans being treated as they should after they serve our, our country so bravely? I mean, there's there's so many things. But on the Tampa level, um, you know, it's continue reinvesting in our neighborhoods, uh, reinvesting in our parks, trying to get people that are homeless, giving a, not a hand out, a hand up, try to help them. Um, but overall, I mean, marketing the city and how the rest of the country sees us, we're doing well. I mean, a 55,000 plus growth in our population through the recession, through the good and the bad times. Uh, I give a lot of credit to, um, former mayor Bob Buckhorn. Uh, they call him, you know, Tampa's best cheerleader. Uh, he, he, you know, he worked very hard. He was very careful in his planning, and uh, I think he had a successful eight-year run. Now we go into the administration of Mayor Jane Castor, who uh, wants to continue building bridges. Um, she's, she, you know, her, the door is open, the line of communication is open, she's got a wonderful chief of staff, she surrounds herself with good people, and she's doing a great job, even though, you know, it's been less than a year that she's been in office, but several successes. Um, we successfully passed, that was proposed by the administration, a $3 billion dollar was called the pipes program to replace our aging stormwater and pipe uh, system. Pipes that go back to the 1920s. You know, mm -hmm. you see water main breaks, road closures, and whatnot. That's an investment for the future. In 2016, um, uh, I work with the administration and with the uh, support of my colleagues, we passed a 251 million dollar stormwater assessment to fix the flooding throughout the city. So that's why there's a lot of construction in South Tampa, and it's not just South Tampa; it's a citywide. You know, ten to twelve year master plan where we're alleviating our stormwater issues, flooding issues, but at the same time, when we talk about sea level rise and climate change, what are we doing? You know, mm -hmm. we're making sure our infrastructure is is up to date. So, you know, in preparation for whatever could happen, you know, Tampa's not just a flood zone. You know, we're actually making the necessary investments in our infrastructure to make sure that we're prepared. Um, but we're taking the necessary steps, I think, and we're investing in in what's needed. You know. Uh, the wants and the needs, we're going with the needs of the community. Sure. And that's where we stand. Well, I, I just, uh, you know, moving into this neighborhood two years ago has been such a great experience for me because it's kind of illuminated a whole other part of Tampa that I never had much opportunity uh, to come to. I mean, I had been to the Seminole Heights when they kind of had their renaissance of restaurants there, but uh, the neighborhood is just very tight knit. You know, I'm on all these different Facebook groups and everybody seems to know each other and heavily involved. You know, I talked to Justin Ricky across the street and he's yeah. very involved and Ray Roa yeah. from Creative Loafing. And I mean, they're such cheerleaders for this neighborhood. And, you know, it seems like Tampa's growth is going to be north of Kennedy. You look at Julian uh, Lane Park and all this oh, stuff yeah. that's happening. It's just kind of amazing where it's headed you you know you mentioned two great people ray and 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 justin uh justin extremely involved you know um and the people around him uh, other people in the community with him um you know i got elected and one of my 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 first major vote was in june i got elected a few months earlier and it was for tbx and the widening of the interstate to put these express toll lanes, basically doubling the, the, the width or the footprint of the existing interstate. The interstate goes right through Seminole Heights, right through West Tampa. And I was the only no vote on that because I, you know, I believed in the neighborhoods. I didn't believe in, you know, keep widening roads to accommodate cars to do what? You know, you're not solving the problem. So in that, I met uh, so many wonderful people that are great friends today. And they're, like you said, their passion. Seminole Heights, for example, in Tampa Heights, it's it's tight knit, but it's safe. You know, you can walk through that neighborhood at night, walk in your dog, whatever, and you're gonna meet friendly faces, and you're gonna feel safe because you know you you are safe and you're surrounded by good people, people that have invested so heavily in the neighborhood. You know, with 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 not just money but with love, and um, and sincere um, compassion and wanting to, you know, lift lift it up and make it what it is. So. A friend of mine, a high school friend, went to Las Vegas for years, went to uh, dental school, came back. Now he's back in the area. And after being gone for so long, we met after years. And he goes, where's Seminole Heights? And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, this guy's been in Las Vegas on the other side of the country here. And he has, has heard, heard of about it. Seminole Heights. I right. go, well, let me, let me take you on a tour. Let me, you know, what do you want to eat? Yeah. Because it's a, a, a district of culinary art. 
uh, you know, people from Brooklyn, New York say, I've heard this, you know, you come down here and you eat things that you'd find up in New York. I wouldn't expect it to be in Tampa, Florida. Yeah. And I go, don't underestimate us. I mean, we're on the map more than you think. And we have the diversity and the culture here that maybe you would it not expect. It has that cuisine, yeah. It, it, and it's unbelievable. So I'm very proud to represent, you know, this wonderful district because so much is going on. And, uh, you know, the people we've mentioned and whatnot, you know, I'm glad to know them because they really care. And, and, and people like that are what lift this, you know, our city up. Well, thank you so much. Guido, for coming in and talking to us. It's a pleasure. Hopefully, you'll come back. Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, when events come up in the in the area that we can talk about. But we appreciate having you in today. Thanks. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care.